Awesome. We good to go? OK. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Yuri Sagalov. I'm co-founder and CEO of AeroFS. And we, what we do is we provide a content-centric enterprise file sync and share and messaging tool that also happens to run on top of OpenStack. And I'll walk you through a little bit of the flow today. So before we really dive in into what we do and why we do it, let me just kind of set the stage for you guys a little bit. Today, you have enterprise file sync and share solutions in the enterprise that are both sanctioned and unsanctioned. A lot of the users are bringing in their own solutions because employees are bringing, or IT is giving them solutions that they don't really want to use. And so what ends up happening is you set up this beautiful tool for them, but the employees end up going to Starbucks and using a public cloud solution that they want to use anyway. And so what we wanted to do is provide something where IT and employees really get all the benefits. So IT is happy and employees is happy, are happy. The reason we want to do that is when you don't really work with the employees, what ends up happening is that like four out of five companies end up saying that we've actually had data leak in the public cloud. Half of those will tell you that it's confidential data. And a lot of the time, what ends up happening is that you know, this is number is actually underrepresented because they're not really going to admit or even know what's going on. And the reason that that happens is that really you end up choosing between two types of solutions. You have the public cloud solutions, consumer grade, look beautiful, but don't really fit into the enterprise workflow, or you can't really control where the data is. Or you have your on-prem solutions, the traditional file servers, the SharePoint solutions, clunky, slow, and are the reason that employees are leaving you in the first place. Another way of thinking about it is you really are choosing between security and usability. Your employees want to use a solution that's easy to use, that's friendly. Your IT people need something that they can control end to end. And if you don't have that, then people go outside the system, everyone ends up losing. So we built AeroFS as a secure on-prem enterprise file sync and share solution. Uh, we now have it deployed with thousands of customers. Many of them are you know, top five banks, top five computer manufacturers, uh, two of the world's largest telecoms. And what they do is they really, you know, the, the beautiful thing behind the solution is that we've never had to train a single end user. They come in, they start using it, and uh, they know immediately how to use it. But it fits into the IT infrastructure that you have and you control. The employees love it because it looks and feels exactly like what they've used every single day for the last five to 10 years in other cases. Uh, you, they can access it anywhere. We have it running on literally every single platform, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. But from the IT point of view, this is where it actually starts getting really interesting. You have all the IT controls that you may need to make a secure file sharing solution, both internally and externally. It plugs into LDAP and AD so that your regular employees can sign in, but we also allow you to share with external vendors. We have end user restriction and management in the forms of MDM, as well as device management. So you can actually say which laptops, which desktops are authorized to log in, share, sync data. You're able to do things like enforce 2FA, so if you want to have an extra security layer on top of it. And most importantly, we really offer you a full audit stream. So every single piece of data that ever goes through AeroFS, whether it's a file creation, user addition, file modification, everything is logged, audited. You can put it into a system like Splunk and act on it almost immediately in near real time. Security is not, you know, the end of security is not just in the audit stream, but actually how you keep the data. And this is where people will tell you that they use, you know, uh, military grade encryption. We actually tell you what the encryption protocol is. So we use AES 256 with CBC. Uh, the data is encrypted both in transit and at rest. We've had every single one of our large customers has performed a security audit on us, and they usually come back saying how much they, how happy they have been with the results and how impressed they have been. The interesting stuff beyond that is actually in the architecture itself. And this is where the OpenStack play comes in, and this is where you can start leveraging your own data centers and so on. So we have a very interesting architecture. It comes in three primary pieces. The first piece is the virtual appliance. The virtual appliance itself acts as a management layer. It does not store data, but it stores metadata. So all of your user administration, all of your permissions, controls, file changes, everything that ever goes through the system gets logged in the appliance. The data itself gets stored in the storage agent that I'll get to in a second. But the appliance can be deployed on OpenStack incredibly easily. So we deliver it as a QCOW2 image for OpenStack. We also deliver it as a cloud init script, so you can actually get up and running in one line. Uh, we also even additionally deliver it as a set of Docker containers that you can get up and running on any environment that supports Docker, and even a core OS image as well. So we really try to give you as much choice and flexibility in deploying the, the appliance itself. 
the storage agent is where the data will actually get stored. And that's kind of the second central piece of this entire system. So the storage agent is delivered as an image that you can run on Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever environment you want. It's more or less a user agent level uh, agent. And it supports a variety of underlying storage infrastructure. So the easiest one is NFS. You mount a file system, you have it exposed. We can write to it, no problem. We also support block storage, something like OpenStack uh, Swift to support natively. We also support Ceph, React CS, a number of other S3-like uh, underlying systems, as well as Amazon S3 itself. The storage agents themselves can be sharded. So if you have users in Europe, you have users in North America, you, or you want redundancy, you can set up and assign users in whatever form you want, either in an automated fashion or a manual fashion. You can even say that these users are not allowed to have data commingled with these users. And um, mo most importantly, or additionally importantly, they're also automatically mirrored. So if you have uh, multiple storage agents, you can have them mirror each other automatically just by bringing a brand new one online. The final piece is the end user devices. And this is where a lot of our underlying network architecture comes into play. So not only do we allow you to sync data with a storage agent, the end user devices can act as providers of data as well. So if you have users inside of your office and they're, you know, they're sitting on the same switch or on the same LAN, we can actually keep the data syncing completely within the office. And that becomes important if you have one of our customers, for example, has about 5,000 employees in one campus in New York. And if they had the data go round trip to the internet and back or to their data center and back, they did the math and realized that it would actually saturate their internet connectivity. What they're able to do with us is essentially using the peer-to-peer -peer or smart routing architecture that we have, deliver the data to all their employees without having to go to the internet back. One copy goes to their data center for auditing control, but the rest of the data can actually sync directly within their system. And so th this provides incredible performance benefits in general. And so this has been the product that we've been selling on the market for the last two years or so. Uh, it's been very successful for us. Customers love it in uh, various sectors, uh, and especially customers that run OpenStack deployments just because of how easy it has been to get up and running. But what I want to do today is give you a little bit of a sneak peek of what we're bringing to market in the next quarter. And uh, this kind of comes from us observing how our customers work and collaborate today. And so, you know, when you think about how people collaborate with a file sharing solution like AeroFest or Dropbox or Box, whatever it may be, you think of something that looks like this. Somebody creates a file, they save the file in the product. If you and I are sharing that folder, great. We are now, you know, in sync, and I know that you saved the file. I got a notification. We can work on it, do whatever we need to do with it. But that's actually not the reality. The reality is after that, you go and email the file because you want to have a conversation with a person about what you're working on. And the email starts looking something like this, where this is a real email from our VP marketing to me. He was, we're working on a press release. He wanted to do some uh, screenshots with me. He sends me three emails with three versions of this that eventually get approved. And I don't even know if we ended up saving it outside of email afterwards. If you're a little bit better about it, maybe you send a link or a path saying, hey, go look at this file over there. Tell me what you think. But it feels a little bit cumbersome because now I have to go outside of email and actually go hunt for it. If you're even more modern, you might be using something like Slack or HipChat for chat. But the fundamental idea is the same. You end up putting the file, you upload the file, you have a conversation with it, someone does some changes to it, they download the file, and now you have two copies of the file. And so you know, what really ends up happening is that all of your revision control ends up happening over email until the final version of the file maybe, maybe ends up back in the product. And the really funny thing is that a couple of weeks ago, Dilbert actually made fun of this exact same thing. And uh, you know, it, it is the last panel of like, the surprises if you'll ever know where the final file is actually saved. <laughs> and so we started with that premise of like, can we do something that's more than just syncing the files back and forth and actually lets people collaborate. And we wanted to think about why people do this weird, uh, you know, can you share this with me? Okay, let me figure out where it is. And the reason that it happens is actually the center bullet point over here. Conversations are at the center of collaboration. We send the files wherever we have the conversation. So if we have the conversation over email, file goes in an email. If we have the conversation over chat, file goes in chat. And what we wanted to do was come up with a way where rather than moving the files back and forth to the conversation, could we bring the conversation to the files themselves? And so this concept we call content-centric collaboration, and it builds on top of the file sync and share product. So syncing is still at the heart of it, but we added conversation to the topic. 
And it starts off looking like a chat tool. You have direct conversations, you have group conversations, you have chat rooms, whatever. But very quickly, you actually start seeing that it's much more than a chat tool. Because when you create a new chat room, what ends up happening is that in the background, so we're creating a marketing chat room right now. What happens in the background is we actually create a shared folder. And any file that you place inside of that shared folder immediately appears in the marketing chat room as well, directly with a preview. And we can do previews for PowerPoint, Word, Excel, most common image types, and so on and so forth. And so this is nice because you can start seeing what's going on in real time as people update it. But it's still hard for you to actually have a conversation around that file. And what we did was we actually took it a step further. We said, well, what if we could actually create the file as a chat room itself? And that's exactly what we did. If you look on the left in the roster, under marketing, we actually expand to show you all the files and folders that you have synced. And when you click on that file, it brings you to a dedicated chat room specifically about that file. And what happens now is that what you have in here is a real-time stream around everything that goes on around the work that you're doing. So Rebecca uploads a file called Deck Quarter 3 Presentation. Uh, Jeff may then go and provide some feedback on it. He could even tag her in it. He can update it directly in there without having to move it, without having to do anything. And as soon as he updates it, a notification pops up saying Jeff has updated it. Re John can come in and provide additional feedback. Rebecca can provide a final copy of the file. And all of that is captured in the same way, if any of you guys are developers, the way when you do code reviews in GitHub and you go and have the conversations, exact same idea. And what happens is that the cool thing is that you can go back in time and jump to the various versions of the file and see not just the file itself, but what was the conversation that led to the change. So this becomes incredibly powerful because as you start adding plugins, as you start adding bots or something else, for example, you could send it for a signature directly from the command line, send, provide an email, say, I need a signature. They go and sign it in DocuSign or wherever else. And we actually pull it back in here without ever having to email the file, do anything with it. And you get a notification saying, Yuri has signed it over DocuSign. Um, we're working on integrations right now into things like Microsoft Office Online. So you'll actually be able to open the file directly from here because you have it both locally, but we can also push it to Office Online, do a co-editing session with somebody over so that looks like Google Docs, save it without ever having to move it, and get a notification directly in here. So this starts getting really interesting. And you know, once you have all of the messages and you have all of the content, one of the natural things that starts happening is you say, well, what about search? And search actually becomes incredibly powerful because we can provide you search results not just of the conversations and the chat rooms and the people. We can actually provide you search results of the data inside of the files. And so this becomes the place you go to. You know, we put search front and center inside of the product. It's literally at the top the same way that the Gmail has search right at the top. Because this becomes the place that you search anytime you need something for data, anytime you need some previous work that you did, anytime you're trying to find a previous conversation. The same way that you search email today for the latest version of the file, you can do it for directly from here. So this isn't live yet today. Uh, we are in closed beta right now. It's coming out this quarter. So we're starting to show it, get feedback to customers. We did what we call an internal preview release to some friendlies over the last couple of weeks. And we're going to be bringing it out to the market in the next month or so. If you're interested, our booth is right over there. We're like literally kitty corner from here. There's a guy in the back with a, his hand up now. So we'd love to talk to you. If you're interested in signing up for the beta or run, learning about how this will run on top of OpenStack, we're very, very happy to chat with you. We're going to be offering this as both hosted and on-prem, which means that you'll be able to start hosted, bring it on-prem. You could start on-prem, bring it hosted later on if you decide to do so. We allow that migration. Um, that's all I got. So if you guys have any questions, I'll be around for a couple of minutes. Otherwise, come see us at the booth. Thank you for your time today.